Hi everyone, today we will go through the process of creating a short and dynamic hyperlapse video using only your smartphone and After Effects. Before you start shooting, make sure you pick a suitable location for your hyperlapse. Tower or pyramid shaped buildings make a very good subject and we can either move towards the building or around it as long as you can start at a distance where your subject is visible and there is a convenient pathway for you to walk on. Another thing that makes the hyperlapse look really lovely is natural movements around the subject. I like to use clouds for that, so shooting in good natural lighting conditions with a bit of clouds in the sky will positively affect the output. Now you can obviously do this with a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, which has several advantages, but today we're going to focus on using a smartphone to shoot and the editing process will practically be the same no matter what type of camera you use. Once you're in location, pull your phone out, launch the camera app and select photo mode. Next, go to settings and enable grid lines. This is going to help us keep a good track of our subject and make sure it stays aligned. I like to use a wide angle lens for my hyperlapse videos. It does come with inconsistent distortion sometimes. There are a few tips you can follow to avoid that, which I will go through in a bit. But if you want to play it safe and the subject fits within your 1x camera, just go with that. Before you start taking any pictures, make sure you use the grid lines as your guide. So what I'm going to do here is align the horizontal line to the bridge that links both towers as much as I can. Make sure the composition looks good and snap the first picture. Take a step forward, doesn't matter how far you go, as long as you maintain consistent gaps between your photos. And same goes for the camera's height from the ground. Once you've taken that second step, pause for two seconds or so, make sure the grid lines and the subject are properly aligned and snap another shot and repeat the same process while moving forward. The reason I mentioned pausing for a couple of seconds is so you can get more movements in the clouds. Make sure that you don't stop for too long and that you keep the timing consistent, otherwise you'll get a jumpy motion at the end. You can snap as many pictures as you want. Once you're done shooting, you're back home and ready to edit. Copy the files over to your computer and open Adobe After Effects, which we will use to piece the frames together. Right click over here, go to Import, File, navigate to the photos, select the first frame. To import all images as one sequence, enable Import JPEG Sequence and make sure you also enable Force Alphabetical Order and hit Import. Let's drag the new sequence over here to create a new composition. And real quick, let's go to the composition settings. I'm gonna rename it to hyperlapse, set the resolution to 1080 by 1920, the frame rate to 25, and for the duration, I believe four seconds should be enough. So let's go with that and click OK. Change the preview resolution to full, double click on the sequence layer to open it, and first thing we need to do here to prepare for the stabilization process is use the tracker tab. If you don't see it in your workspace, you can simply enable it by going to window and make sure the tracker here is enabled. Once you get that, go ahead and click on stabilize motion. You'll notice that a new tracker point showed up on top of your footage here. Move it to a high contrast area in your image, somewhere around the center of your subject. In my case here, I think this dark area in the center of the bridge is perfect. And for best tracking results, make sure that the area you're tracking is visible throughout the whole clip. Let's enlarge the tracking area a bit and then click here to start tracking. This is where After Effects will start analyzing and tracking the footage frame by frame. Once the tracking process is over, click on Edit Target, OK, click on Apply, hit OK. And as you can see here, the tracked area is almost locked in, which will help us get better stabilization in the next step. However, the overall footage is still very shaky, so let's fix that. But first, with the sequence layer selected, let's go to Layer, Pre-Compose, rename this to Tracking, make sure you choose Move All Attributes to the new composition, enable Adjust Composition Duration, next go to the Effects tab and look for Warp Stabilizer, add that to the Tracking layer, pull up the Advanced Settings, enable Detailed Analysis, disable Fast Analysis, change the Rolling Shutter Ripple to Enhanced Reduction, 
increase the crop smooth ratio to 100% and now you can sit back and wait for warp stabilizer to finish analyzing. These are the settings that worked best for me when dealing with distorted wide angle shots like these but I highly encourage you to experiment with different values here since it all depends on the sequence you're working with. Once the warp stabilizer has finished analyzing you can preview the result and hopefully you'll end up with smooth and stable motion like this. Now here's one more thing I like to do to make the movement even smoother. First go to layer, pre-compose, I'm gonna call this one stabilization, hit ok, next open the stabilization comp, go to composition, pre-render, you can choose to save this anywhere on your computer and start rendering. As you can see now the layer has been replaced with the pre-rendered video file. Everything looks exactly the same for now but we're about to change that. Let's go to layer, time, enable time remapping, bring the second keyframe to the two second mark, right click and go to keyframe assistant, choose easy ease in, right click on the first keyframe, same thing here except that we're gonna go with easy ease out instead. This way the camera movement doesn't start or end abruptly. And finally go over here and click once to enable frame blending which will add even more smoothness to the sequence as you can see from the playback here. And if you want to turn this into a 4 seconds loop, press Ctrl D to duplicate the layer, drag the copy all the way over here and then go to layer, time and choose time reverse layer. Let's have a quick look. It looks really good except that I know for a fact that another important factor which can make a really good hyperlapse is color grading. So let's add a new adjustment layer on top. Under the effects tab look for lumetri color and add that in. First let's adjust the white balance as it looks a bit more towards the cooler side right now. Increase the saturation, add some contrast, increase the highlights to brighten the sky a bit. Same thing goes for the shadows to brighten the overall dark areas. You can also add a bit of exposure, lift the black levels up and increasing the white levels will help us brighten the clouds. I think it looks a little bit overexposed now so let's decrease the highlights. Cool, next let's go to the creative settings and add a bit of a faded film look. You can also add some sharpness but do not overdo it. And here comes the fun part, we can play around with some colors here but first let's lift the shadows somewhere around this level, create a similar shape to this on your RGB curve to add a bit of extra contrast. Now let's use the hue versus saturation selector to pick the blue color of the sky, bring the selected color range up to saturated. I think we can do the same to the cyan color range to adjust a larger area of the sky and same goes for the green color. Apart from saturation you can get even more creative and adjust specific hues in your footage. I like to play around with the green and blue ranges to create some nice color contrast without overdoing it. Let's go back and add even more saturation to the blues. Nice! You can also scroll all the way down here and play around with the color wheels. Darken the shadows a bit. Add a bit of a blue tint to the shadows. Brighten the mid-tones. I'll go with orange this time. And same goes for the highlights. And finally let's add a subtle vignette effect to achieve some sort of a dramatic feel. Let's have a quick look at the result. Beautiful! You can see how much of a difference the color grading step has brought to the hyperlapse. For those of you who are members of my Patreon and would like to have access to this project file, it's now available on my page along with many other After Effects and Photoshop projects. If you have any questions feel free to ask down below as I read every single comment. Don't forget to share your hyperlapse videos with me on Instagram. Stay creative and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.